My understanding is some of them fellers over there in Indian intelligence changed their opinion about how smart of a programmer I am or how smart of a computer guy I am after they saw my website. Because during this class, one thing everyone knew about me is I was the worst IT guy in the entire program. I'm in grad school. I don't have my Network Plus, Plus certification. But um, I also ask a lot of questions, so I show how little I know. And then I built a website. And my, my website was initially supposed to be createadate.com, where you uh, get an idea for a date. Like it's, it's kind of a game. Do whatever I tell you to do, and it's kind of like a random date generator. But then everyone in my class didn't, or everyone in my group didn't want to do it because they're all older. So they're like, I don't want to go make dates. I want to make things for kids. I want to make play dates for kids. And so I was like, all right, well, here's what we'll do. We'll, have an, we'll, we'll, we'll give people all kinds of ideas. So I also made a bad idea generator. And uh, I, made, I, made, I made one for the kids, but I also made a bad idea generator. And uh, I made one, that, and, and basically, so uh, one of the ideas was uh, go on the dark web and hire a hitman and then track down the hitman and murder them. And so, uh, yeah, so I, I had lots of ideas and I thought the website was kind of pretty, but what happened was uh, I learned one lesson from that, from that class is I was in charge of issuing uh, <laughs> passwords and I didn't issue a proper password and uh, someone hacked us. And if you, if you don't issue proper passwords, people can access that server. And so I, I had all good passwords except for one, someone got added later. And uh, then um, I, I, I initially I thought it was the Chinos, because I thought there's no way them, them North Koreanos been been watching me and knowing all kinds of shit about me. They know they know about this website I'm working on for a small class. No way, that's a, that's not as as powerful of a country um, as as you need to be to know what I'm doing in that situation. And so I assumed it was the Chinos, but um, Chinos are very close with the North Koreans, you know? The, uh, the, 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 one of the generals over in China said, uh, they're like tongue and lips or lips and teeth. Lips and teeth, right? I can't remember. Uh, but uh, it, it, that means they're pretty close. Uh, they fought wars together for a long time. They've known each other for a long time. North Korea is kind of an extension of the Chinese economy. Uh, they're, they're, pretty, they're, they're pretty impoverished people. But um, they don't, it's kind of weird that uh, China doesn't want to conquer North Korea. It's probably because, it, wait, no, Taiwan doesn't speak Chinese either. Uh, I don't know why China doesn't want to conquer North Korea. Probably because uh, they'd have to deal with starving people. All right, so um, sometimes it's hard to live with a certain amount of people on a certain amount of land um, with certain weather conditions. And that's just the reality of the universe, and some people will never understand that because they're waiting for God. You know who's not waiting for God? Them North Koreanos. They don't believe in God. You know, they believe in Kim Jong-un, sort of. They sure believed in Kim Jong-il. They believed in, what is his name, Kim Jong-il or Kim Il-sung. Um, they, but they, they sure believed in Kim Jong-il. That's for sure. That was a very powerful man. And so, uh, when, when you, when you have a country that's never had a female leader before, uh, you never know how that's going to go, but um, she, sure, she sure seems like she's an assertive woman, but uh, she's also, uh, I mean, she sure seems like she, she ain't afraid to throw around threats over little things like pamphlets, but I mean, I, I can understand if you're trying to get your country a new reputation, you don't want everyone insulting you, and I mean, what, what are you going to do, partner with the, with the South Koreans? I mean, if you partner with the South Koreans and you connect your economy more, then it might actually um, make it so that people don't starve during bad times, but um, doesn't mean that uh, you don't have control. I mean, it's kind of like states' rights, like where we believe that um, the local governments have a lot of, a lot of power, but you know, I'm not saying that North Korea needs to change their mind, but I'm just saying like, if I was concerned about the welfare of my people, I was concerned about um, them little kids starving. I'd go, well, I know that South Korea can weather a bad time because South Korea, um, they're a powerhouse economy. They got them Samsungs. They got, uh, what else they got out there? I can't even remember. They got Kia, wait, do, do they have Kia? They got all kinds of shit. 
All right, so I'm not very respectful to teachers sometimes, especially if I think you're a bad spy, because like, if there's anything I know is that some spies are not spies. One time I told um, the world through Facebook that they should call their congressperson every single day until I come back on Facebook because I was deleting my Facebook. I only had like 50 followers. And then my professor talked about it to me, but that professor was always, like he was like constantly, he was mean to me. Like I, I really wanted to learn from him, but he was mean to me. And man, once you start being mean to me, I can get mean back. I mean, there's, no, there's nothing like how mean I can get. I'm like the meanest man in the world. It's, it's really, really hard to explain how mean I am. I mean, I realize that it's like I should be nicer. It's like, uh-uh, there's a reason that I get chosen for this situation. It's because I am mean when I am supposed to be mean. But it, it's not, it's not that I, that's not, that doesn't say that I'm mean. I'm a really nice fella. It says, when you're mean to me, I am meaner than you're mean. It's kind of like when Israel attacked Hezbollah real quick, like real, real hard, you know, during the 2007 war. They, they were vicious. Everyone's going, well, those bombs are illegal. It's like, all right, well, they didn't even use nukes. Well, I mean, I mean, I don't know what you think is legal, not illegal. I mean, we can all sit around and sing kubaya and talk about what's legal. And it's like, all right, I understand why. But when war happens and you're trying to survive, basically you, you try to kill people. That's just how it works. So um, some of these people, that have this mindset of what's legal, not legal, don't understand the state of nature, ain't got no law. That's why you that's why a lot of us Americans grow up hearing stories about, you know, settling the West. You know, lawless land where you got these Indians wanna come over there and cut your freaking head off or the top of your head off and go show it to their friends, hey look, I cut off his skin on the top of his head. Isn't that cool? I mean, seriously, you know why? Because they were trying to scare them. It was a form of terrorism. Terrorism is warfare. And you know what? War is terror. And if you don't know that, then you're, you're just, you're someone who's been too caught up in the war on terror for a long time. Like you don't even understand the nature of the universe. Nature of the universe is terror. And that, that's, just, that's just why you gotta learn how to conquer that fear. And I understand people are afraid. If there's anything that's scary, it's nuclear war, but, um, uh, number one, need congressional approval. And number two, um, got me some pretty good allies. Got me some pretty good technology. Got me a pretty good strategy. Got me a pretty good enemy. Thinks he's the shit. He's got old Russian Jesus on his side. He's got the Russian Orthodox Church. So, uh, you know, uh, there's nothing I like more than beating a fucking dumbass Christian like that.